Listen to the Hang Time Podcast with Seku Smith. It drops every Monday and Thursday. You can also subscribe on Apple Podcasts or iHeartRadio. New episodes every week, all NBA season long. The highlights continue. Blake Griffin and the Pistons welcoming his former team to town as the Clippers start a six-game road trip. Mm, you said former team. Mm. Yes. That means you bring a little extra hunt TD Correct. early on. Always, always. They got off to an excellent and a quick start. He came out, though, firing from deep as well, DZ. Well, it lets everybody know that that's part of his game. And, and now Dwayne Casey said, we're going to let you do more of it, but I still Ooh. get to the basket. <laughs> still showing athleticism. Yeah, well, here as well. Ooh. How about this, though? Uh, if I can read lips correctly, this is see. Steve Ballmer saying, uh, how many does Blake have already? Oh, he's <laughs> keeping count of scores? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He did have a big game out there. He finished with 24 points, 11 rebounds, mm. 6 assists. That's special right there. And it looks like they're handily up in the third quarter, up by 20, so they shouldn't run away with this, right? Well, the Clippers would storm back in oh. that fourth quarter to take the lead. That was Montrez Harrell throwing it down. Then Shea Gildas Alexander. Love you, Shea. Love goes. you, young fella. Mike Scott working in the post. Get him, cuz. Ooh. We'll get them buckets, Mike Scott. That would cap a 24 to 5 run, tying things up at 91 apiece. And then Lou Will taking over in the fourth quarter, scoring 18 points in the quarter alone. Well, I was impressed because a lot of it was going to his right, TD. We know he can go left. Yeah. All left. Going yes. right tonight yes. was like late in your career, you can have some new strikes. Right. But you look at their bench, their bench scored 90 points, so that bench was so effective tonight. Lou Will finished with 39 points in this game, getting it done both inside and out down the stretch. Yeah. And that would do yeah. it. That Reggie, yeah, whoever that was. Uh, he is a professional bucket getter. Man. That he is. It's unbelievable. His size and then you, you force him right, force him right. He shows you can go right. And then the last bucket yes. to close the game. Going right back left. left. <laughs> going left. The Clippers go on to win it 111 to 101. Now, the Brooklyn Nets wrapped up the month of January with an 11-4 record Saturday night in Orlando to face a Magic team that's lost seven of their last nine. But there's a couple of all-stars. Vooch, D'Lo. Both guys very deserving, working hard, staying consistent. And obviously for Brooklyn in the playoff hunt, and D'Lo just looking real smooth with it. That would tie things up at 35 apiece. Then, Vooch running the pick and roll for the one slam that he does Oh, so well, TD. Down below. Watch your head down below. Strong finish at the basket. The final seconds of the half here. Shabazz Napier, look, gets it to go. Big shot maker, young fella. To beat the buzzer. He had 15 points in this game. And D'Angelo Russell coming out shooting here in this third quarter. A three-pointer with a hand in his face. He had 23 points. But Vooch taking over down low in this game. He scored 12 of his 24 points in the fourth quarter. Well, he knows Jared Allen's a good shot block. But look how he uses his body just to create enough space. And there's that baby soft touch hook he's been making all season long. That he has. Ooh. Okay. The Nets, though, still in the playoff. Oh, Vooch, don't give him the baby dream. I like that. I like the nice fadeaway. Mm. One of the toughest shot, hardest shot to block is a fadeaway. Magic go on to win it 102 to 89. Not easy, though, to take mm. down a red hot Brooklyn Nets team. That is true. They have been playing really good basketball over the last month or so. That they have. And as we mentioned, a couple of all-stars in that game. Let's take a look at what the Nets, led by D'Angelo Russell, were able to accomplish in the month of January alone. I mentioned their 11-4 and record. He was averaging nearly 24 points on 48% from the field in this one, but also distributing with seven and almost a half assists. Well, he's a new per- poster child, in my opinion, TV, where you don't give up on a young guy. Nope. Early in his career, we saw things not go particularly well in L.A. Now in a new scenery, a new voice in his ear. Right. Now he's playing to his potential. And, and we thought he was a problem in L.A., but it seems like he wasn't. It's like you said, a new scenery, opportunity, and then Coach Axon has so much confidence in his kid, and you can just tell by the way he's playing, and it's spread throughout that team. Well, game time continues after the break on a 12-game Saturday night in the NBA including this guy, Luka Doncic, who I believe has a couple of new teammates. Oh, he does? Soon. Ooh, Did the, you hear? Yeah, he's the Don, what I heard. <laughs> 14 points late in the game. He needed three more quarters. <laughs> right? Yes, yes. Three more quarters would have definitely got him to 40. <laughs> the Warriors went on to win at 115 to 101. 
Let's go ahead and check in with Steph after the game. Here he is with Lisa Salters. <laughs> Such a smooth way to remind you he's a two-time MVP. What were you telling yourself? At, well, I don't know. This doesn't happen often. <laughs> I'm not used to having to come up with that inner dialogue. No, and I just, I just think the fact that you play the game the right way, you know the ball's going to come back and find you, and that's just the way the system is for those guys. Right, and just understanding what you need to do to help your team out. It's not always about scoring. Just having stuff on the court gives you a guy that can make shots, but just his shot-making ability, you still have to stay at home. It's still going to open up driving lanes for guys like Iggy, Clay Thompson, Durant, and it's a luxury when you can have a guy that you don't need his scoring. Meanwhile, Steph's splash brother, Clay Thompson, <laughs> scored 28 points, 10 of 15 from the field. What did you see from his shooting? Well, first of all, when you're watching guys that understand that the ball movement, the player movement is premium one to the Warriors. So Clay Thompson's come in tonight and said, OK, Lakers, you get a layup, you're scoring, but we get out and run, we have great spacing. And y'all know I lead the NBA in knocking down catch and shoot threes. So I'm going to put the ball on the floor, get to the rim, get a couple layups, get myself going. but. Once again, when you have guys run to the three-point line, nobody's in the paint, you're able to get all the way to the basket and kind of trick the defense. Same play here. Y'all know I can make threes. You're pushing up on me. I'm putting the ball on the floor. I'm attacking the defense slowly but surely, getting myself in rhythm. Yes, I missed the game previously before the illness. Now let me get another layup. Good contest by Beasley, but not enough. Now, remember I said spacing? Remember I said players know their system? They know eventually the defense is going to suck into the lane. Now you pop out, leave it, splash. You <laughs> knock down the three. You remind everybody, yes, I missed that game the other right. night. They missed my shooting ability tonight. I come back and remind people. So once again, the Warriors share the basketball, player movement, ball movement. And when they're playing this well in February, it's got to be frightening for all 29 other teams. I mean, it's scary anyway just watching these guys play throughout the season, especially when everyone is healthy. If this team can stay healthy, you know, they could be NBA champion once again. But the way they play, the chemistry, how well, as you said, how well they move without the ball, they know one another. The best team, the teams that have won championship, have great continuity, and that's because they've been together for a few years. When you have players that have been together one or two years, we don't really know each other that well. Right. Mm -hmm. But when you can put guys that can stay together four or five years, and also another key is keeping your coaching staff together, mm. being able to develop your young talent, but also having guys that – your players trust in and they know. And a lot of times it gets missing because of the talent. But when I have four coaches that I've won championship with, those guys know me and I know them. And somehow that continuity has not been disrupted by welcoming mm. Boogie to the roster, who seems to be fitting in flawlessly. It's fitting in flawlessly, and you can never overestimate the fact that he was there for training camp. That's the key. He didn't come in late. He didn't get traded there. Yes, he was in it, but he was rehabbing around the team. He was doing the training around the team. When he was getting healthy, Cuz went down to the G League. So it's little things like that lets yeah. me know his maturity coming into this situation is on a premium high. And why do we say that, TD? Because we know the microscope's on Cuz because right. they win the championship, and he's a big reason on why they win. Now some team's going to say, well, maybe he's grown up. Let's throw him yeah. a bank load of money. Let's get their truck backing up. But Cuz is like, wait a minute. This is a team that's believed in me. I'm not just going to run away. But then the Warriors are saying, wait a minute. Someone offers you a four-year deal one night. Uh, I, I gotta get go. your butt out of here. Yes. Go get that Those money. guys are going to push him out faster <laughs> exactly. than he came in. But I still think with, with Cousin, just knowing those guys and having played with them, and they understand him as a player, we're going to help you out. There's nothing better than playing with veterans who won championship because those guys can have a different conversation than you going to another team and them not talking. They're talking about the playoff. This team is talking about winning an NBA championship because they have done it, and you can't teach that. Having seen him and coached him as many years ago as you did, TD, are you surprised that he's fit into this Warrior system so seamlessly and so quickly? I got a chance to see him, and even when GMs were coming in, and I was telling him, I said, hey, DeMarcus is a great kid. I said, he loves the game. He wants to win. He's passionate about what he does. Mm -hmm. Don't get his attitude caught up with him not enjoying his teammates, because John Wall, all of us on the coaching staff, we all love DeMarcus. DeMarcus just wanted to win. At the end of the day, going to Sacramento, it was not a winning environment. You know, that organization was not winning at the time. They've done, they've done a great job this year. Mm -hmm. But when he was there, he wanted to win. 
But what he understood was I have to play with guys that are that is as passionate about the game as I am and want to win as much as I do, and I will do my part. He understands his role with this team right now. He's not going to disrupt this team because this team has won championship, but having those veteran players make the transition a lot easier. Well, we've got a lot more highlights to get to on a 12-game Saturday night as game time continues next with James Harden and the Houston Rockets looking to get back on track after dropping two in a row in Utah to play the Jazz. We'll be right back. We're in the money for Anthony Davis in this situation. We have breaking news. Uh, according to Chris Haynes, LeBron James will not play tonight against the Golden State Warriors due to, quote, load management. League sources tell Yahoo Sports. Now, LeBron James played 44 minutes in his first game back. The Lakers are facing the Golden State Warriors, the same team he hurt his groin against on Christmas Day. Rex, duck, what ducking. do you make of this? KD-itis. <laughs> He's ducking KD. Steph-itis. Clay-itis. No. I, I, I was surprised he played 44 minutes the other night. Obviously, it's a little bit of a maintenance move, right? Yeah. I, I, I thought he, he said it, you know, prior to this game, you know, right after he played so many minutes, it's going to be one of the situations that I have to see how my body respond because we don't know. We were yeah. an emotional high after a basketball game. Everything's still feeling good. You got to win. Uh, you, you look extremely sharp after being off for so many, so many uh, months, you know what I mean, since playing, what, December 25th? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So now he's back. And he probably felt a little ailments and, you know, probably just took the safe approach and getting back out there. Well, Karan, before he returned, you said, look, LeBron doesn't look like he's 100% from seeing him in no. practice. So where do you think he was when he returned if he wasn't 100%? I think he was somewhere between 75 and 80, and that's still better than 80% of the association. So when you're able to go out there with his high basketball IQ, and just mind you, you know, if LeBron's out there on the basketball court, the coverage has changed. You know, you have to give him so much attention that it enables other guys to be the best possible version of themselves, have an open opportunity. How old, how old is LeBron now? 34. 34. You know, you start, and and this makes sense. It, it's a it's a maintenance move. Yeah. You don't you don't get groins and hamstrings when you're 24, but you start getting them later on. And when you start getting them, you really got to you you've got to be careful to not come back and do too much too fast. Young player that seems to be taking a bit of the load on his shoulders. Brandon Ingram recently really carrying this team offensively with no Lonzo Ball in the lineup as well. Really nice player, and you've kind of been waiting for him. You saw, you know, the length and the, all the skill set when he was at Duke, and he's really, you know, he got suspended early in the year, starting to put it together. He's a beautiful offensive player. Yeah, he, you know, he's a complete player. You know, we went from, you know, scoring the basketball in the paint with his wiry strength to now, you know, being able to have that mid-range consistent shot and now playing with LeBron and Rondo, he's been able to, you know, start knocking down perimeter shots, catch and shoot, not holding the ball, you know, 1-1000, 2-1000 type of player, and that's exactly what you need. So he's averaging 22 and a half over his last six games. So when we look at this Laker young core and we talk about the Anthony Davis trade, and we saw that Brandon Ingram allegedly was not or reportedly not in that trade offer, is he now the crown jewel of this young group? I, I think so. I think yes. we want to have him to. Yes. Body language says yes, Karan. And so does the smile. Look at it. Look, look. He knows it. I mean, who, who do you think is the guy? The, 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 the Lonzo. The crown. Yeah. Yep. But. I mean, it, it, it varies, man. It goes back and forth. Hmm. I'm with you. You know I'm with you. <laughs> I feel like you're being very, very tight-lipped on this situation as if you don't want to give us more. too much information. That's more. fine. But just judging from talent and what they produce, Rex, <laughs> who do you say is the crown jewel of that young group, Brandon Ingram, uh, Kyle Kuzma, who don't forget that yeah. 27th pick that they used on Kyle Kuzma came over from that D'Angelo Russell trade um, with Brooklyn. So they got him essentially replacing a uh, young D'Angelo Russell. Yeah. You know, there's some thought that maybe they got uh, rid of D'Angelo a little too soon. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I know some of us think that. But, yes, I think Brandon Ingram is the crown jewel in that, in that piece, in the piece of the puzzle. And at some point, they're going to have to give it. They're going to have to give it up if they want to get AD done now. I thought, I, you know, me personally, I thought it, I'm a huge Kyle Kuzma guy. Yeah, I am too. I love an underdog. And I think that, you know, just from last season, we talk about adversity. I think he was the guy that was in the forefront, the poster child. Mm -hmm. Uh, in all the interviews, saying all the right things, having the coach back, even when, you know, Father Ball was out there saying miscellaneous things. I just felt like he kept 
the foundation sound, thought he was the voice of reason, and he showed great composure and leadership, not just by talking, but actually playing and demonstrating it on the court also. Well, someone who's shown leadership in the NBA Finals in big situations, one Kyrie Irving. Mm -hmm. But this week, oh, he had some situations off the court in Madison Square Garden. They started chanting for him to come play for the New York Knicks. But here's Kyrie after the Celtics won that game. You did hear the, the chance, Kyrie? Are you, are you reaching for it right now? No, no, I'm, I'm, I couldn't hear everything. You said. Everybody heard it. Like, we, come on, man. Like, come on, man. Do you, I mean, do you laugh at all when you hear that? I mean, it's, a lot of guys get cheered. Good players get cheered when they come here. That's a little different. Like I said, it's nothing but a distraction at this point. Like, you know what I mean? I, like I said, again, I'm appreciative of the cheers. I'm appreciative of the fan support that I get around the league in every arena. Obviously, being back home. What has been said, I repeat myself again, what has been said, what has been circling around in terms of extra commentary, I kind of figured it was going to be something like that tonight. Um, I'm just happy we got the win and I'm ready to go back to Boston. I think you, you know the answer to that, man. It's just, I, you know, obviously you would hope uh, it would quiet down, but like I said, it doesn't help when, you know, across the league, you know, it's just out outside noise again and my name gets thrown into it and then you know conversation speculations everybody's worried about their credibility I don't know how this media empire works I know it's a bunch of nonsense to me so um, I have a focus in winning the championship this year and um, that's where my focus is going to stay so you know even me saying something like that is not concrete enough for anybody so you know it is what it is um, you know I got to go home and take care of my family and friends and that's the stuff where it really matters for me um, you know, loving the game of basketball, that's where it's always going to be. I didn't do this for the media. I didn't do this for the money. I didn't do this for the fans. I did it because I love the game. And I work extremely hard at my craft. And I want to be one of the greatest ever. So that's where my focus is. You know what I mean? It's going to come. I'm appreciative how, you know, grateful I am. I'm grateful for all the, you know, identify, everybody identifying the talents that I am, who wants to play with me. I'm, I'm appreciative of that. But at the end of the day, like I said this morning, I'm going to make the best decision for me and my family. And, and that's how it's going to go. There is so much there with Kyrie Irving. I think the, the thing you're laughing about is the fact that he says, oh, I don't know how this media thing works. He seems to be pretty good at it. In fact, I mean, when you're the lead in a major motion picture and was also an actor in high school, don't forget that as well. Kyrie Irving, a very overall talented guy. Not, not familiar with this media empire wearing an Uncle Drew hat during the the interview excellent product placement excellent yes he's, he's a brilliant guy i love him i i do love him and i so, love that kyrie he likes to talk he's good in front of the camera you can tell he's a little bit bothered and there look i didn't i didn't play in an era where we had social media the 24-hour news cycle all this time this is where i give you guys and this era so much credit i don't know how you do it and i that this is where i don't i don't think these guys make enough money having to deal with this type of media crush. I mean, he can't leave his hotel right now without people just knocking his door down trying to get at him. He's got a $21 million player option for next season. Seems like that will not be exercised. So where will he, where will he play next year? Will he be in a Boston uniform? It's possible that he can be in a Boston uniform. Uh, I think that he will more, most likely be in the Big Apple. And I just think that, you know, when you talk about the move of Porzingis and Tim Hardaway and C Steve Mills and those guys did an excellent job of creating s that cap space to acquire a guy like Kyrie Irving or Kevin Durant or whoever, you know what I mean? Even possibly a Jimmy Butler or whatever, because, you, you know, he's still not looking extremely happy there in Philadelphia. And look, Kyrie is just a pleasure to play with. He's a champion. He's a perennial all-star. He's someone that loves the game of basketball, which he stated. And obviously, you see, this kid did not grow up playing against ghosts and basketball cones. He's been playing against live bodies, activity, and it's showing. He's a gamer. I want the best for him and his family, and he's passionate about his craft. So it should be interesting to see what the Boston Celtics do. If, if that's the case, maybe before the trade deadline, we could see a Kyrie Irving trade, and man, that would be huge. We've got 12 games again tonight, 24 teams for the simple math on that. And here are some updates of notable players. Chris Paul sitting this one out for rest. LeBron James out, same uh, designation. Eric Bledsoe also out with an Achilles. Out for rest. Hey, it you just know what? still looks weird. It looks like, you know, when you're growing up. Rest. You know, when you go to the hospital, you go, you know, when you're younger, you break your arm, you break your leg, you <laughs> tear something. Now when you get older, 
you slept wrong. <laughs> you yes, get out right. of bed, you can't do nothing. Like, it's all those things happening right now. <laughs> well, you know who is playing? How about one Lou Will? Age not affecting him. And look at that tie score. The Clippers have fought their way back in this after being down by double digits in the second half. He's a gamer. NBA.